It is late in the second era, a time of war, as the Empire of Tiber Septim sweeps through the kingdoms of Tambrio in a glorious bid for conquest. Septim is opposed on all sides, but never more fiercely than by Hammerfell, the ancestral home of the Red Gods. The High King of Hammerfell, Thassard II, resists the Imperial invasions even as he sees other kingdoms crumble. Until at last, without warning and surprisingly devoid of court treachery, death takes its full measure. With its High King dead, Hammerfell is crippled, plunging into a bloody civil war between the crowns, fighting for their homeland's continued sovereignty, and the forebears, who have finally accepted the Emperor's rule. The crowns, led by the heir to Fassad, Prince Ator, are continually victorious, spilling the blood of the forebears across Hammerfell's sands. From his seat of power in the port city of Strosmakai, Prince Ator slowly reunites his father's unraveled kingdom. Feeling their impending defeat, the forebears sign a pact with the Emperor, allowing him to bring his armies in, crush the crowns, and rule Hammerfell as his own. Tiber Septim's armies prove too much for the proud Red God crowns. Tiber Septim sends his best commander, Lord Richton, to Strokes Mackay to close the grip on Prince Ator and the crowns. The prince rallies his forces for one last stand. Knowing that Hammerfell's sovereignty is at stake, the crown forces match the might of the Empire, meeting them in the harbor of Strokes Mackay for the final battle. The fighting is fierce. Lord Richton, having seen the Prince's victories at sea before, decides to bring his last resource to the fore. The dragon, Nathalilagus, proud jewel of the Imperial Crown. Ator commands his archers to ready their weapons. But is struck down himself by Richton's assassin, felled by an arrow whose poison spreads too fast. Ator's wizard attempts to save the prince, but the dragon ends his magic and the crown's hope for victory in a single fiery breath. Having conquered the crowns, the emperor's forces claim rule over all of Hammerfell. Imperial garrisons are stationed at every city, and Richton himself is named provisional governor of Stros Mackay. Months pass. The Red Guards of Hammerfell both crown and forebear, learn to live under the new imperial rule, and Tiber Septim extends his reach into the rest of Tamriel. It is only through fate that any of this will come to concern our hero, Cyrus, a red guard who long ago left Hammerfell to wander the borderlands of the Empire. Krimia, Cyrus. Eto for or Okodor. Let's make this short, Sarathra. I've got work to do. I leave with Duardine's men in an hour. You should know you got me the job. Sratra kol kotero to Hammerfell, boshe in rot. The seal is broken. Sratra warrega. Yeah, I bet you were. No kodo adin. Sratra X, Sratra X kail. Izara. Rolita dek kaudor. I need a ship. Money too. We haven't spoken in ten years. There was trouble. I killed her husband. Hammerfell's prodigal son, Cyrus, returns to the province of his birth. He buys passage to the island of Stros Mackay in the hopes of rescuing his sister, Izara. Get me 
below is what the pilot said to the wet head knaves before him. The Restless League is claiming this cargo, said the other with cruel, cruel clarity. Probably wouldn't make a difference if I told you I had no time for this. This is about Red Guard armor, boy. Stand aside. Yes, a doubtful notion it is. Piracy and politics. But there you have it. Never been much for politics. In my day, piracy was honest work. Don't be a hero, boy. Where's the money in that? And yea, verily, by his bravery, they were impressed. For a scant few seconds. 